My name is Jake, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna do another Review My Pie video. I love this series. So for those of you that are new to the channel, I've created a series called Review My Pie a couple of months ago, and it's where I review subscriber portfolios. And you know, on the channel here, I've, I really talk mostly about dividend investing and really I'm relating it to newer beginner investors, right? And so in this series, I review subscriber portfolios and the portfolio, it doesn't have to be an M1 Finance. For those of you that follow the channel, I, I invest with M1 Finance. I also invest with other brokerages, for example, in my Vanguard account, um, but primarily I'm, in, I'm focusing on my M1 portfolio here in which I share on YouTube. But in the Review My Pie series, it doesn't have to be an M1 portfolio, it can be a spread it could be through fidelity, it could be a screenshot, it doesn't matter. If you would like me to review your portfolio in a future video, shoot me over in an email and kind of share a few pieces of information, you know, your age, what your goals are. By goals, I really mean when are you looking to tap into the dividends to pay for your living expenses? And also maybe your location, are you in Europe? Are you in the US? Where, where are you at? Also, if it's in a taxable account or a tax deferred or a tax sheltered account and all of those kind of things as well as how much you're funding the portfolio each month and your age. So I can kind of, you know, provide a little bit more of a tailored message to you and make it personalized. Right, And so in the video today, I'm not a financial advisor, so don't take what I'm saying as financial advice. Don't go and invest all of your money in everything that I'm saying. Really, I'm sharing this to help kind of open your mind into new ways, of th new th new ways to think about how you invest. In today's video, we're gonna review six portfolios. And the first portfolio is gonna be from an individual who is 21 years old, is located in Oklahoma, so here in the US. The second portfolio is a 20 year old out of London. And the third portfolio is a 25 year old location unknown. Portfolio four is a 37 year old, also don't know where they're located. Portfolio five is a 52 year old, also location unknown. And the last portfolio, portfolio six, is from a 13 year old who emailed me in from the UK. Man, when I was 13, I, was, I, I wasn't investing when I was 13. I was doing this when I was 13. No, I, I need to play World of Warcraft. All right, major stone shield potions should be... Oh, God. You can't go to the bathroom. You're stacking Sunder armor. Dude, I'm almost dead. Kyle, cast arcane missiles. All yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> did we did it, you guys. We're totally heroes. That was such uber ponage. All right, the first portfolio is from Jordan. Jordan writes, hey Jake, my name is Jordan. I'm from your neighboring state, Oklahoma. For everybody that doesn't know, I'm down here in Texas. I am 21 years old and I have, I have had about two years worth of experience with investing. I started at age 19 and ran into some financial troubles and was forced to liquidate my entire portfolio about six months ago. I started investing when I was financially able and stayed in, and started using M1 Finance. I love the brokerage and haven't looked back since. I transferred over from Robinhood like you did. Right now, I'm still in college working part-time and, can, and cannot afford to invest vast amounts of money, but every bit counts. Right now, I can afford to invest around $200 a month, and right now, my portfolio is sitting at about $2,500. I recently started a YouTube channel about two months ago, not a plug, uh, not a plug, just describing financial journey, and I have half, and I'm halfway towards monetization with about 500 subscribers. Hey man, that's exciting. Uh, my intention is to hopefully get monetized soon, so I can invest 100% of my earnings back into my portfolio and compound my portfolio quicker. So for the next two years until I finish college, I would like to graduate with a portfolio of at least $10,000 to get a great financial head start. That is a head start. Most people start their career with, with debt, so you're, you're already ahead of the game. My goal with the portfolio is to gain as much passive income as possible by investing in great companies. I primarily focus on dividend growth companies as well as some older uh, high yielding dividend aristocrats. My intention is to one day grow the income stream large enough to support my family and free myself from financial burdens. Also, my plan is to pass down the dividend income stream to future generations. Thank you so much for your time, Jake, and great job with the channel. I look forward to keeping in contact with you in the future. Hey, Jordan, this is so, so awesome, man. So you're 21 years old. You started when you were 19. You ran into hardships, right? Th these kind of things happen, 
So you don't mention if this is in a taxable account or a tax sheltered or tax deferred account. For those of you that may be not familiar with that, a tax sheltered or deferred account, I'm talking about an IRA, maybe a 401k. It says you're working part time, so you probably don't have access to a 401k. Um, if you're 21 years old, if in my opinion, I would hope that you have a Roth IRA. Uh, it's just the tax advantages that come with that. It's it's hard not to do it. I mean, if, if you're 21 years old, it, the only caveat there is you're not going to be able to access the, the money right away. But if you're starting at 21, investing into a Roth IRA, and through the power of compounding, you're going to be a millionaire well before you reach uh, retire, the age of retirement. And the great thing about Roth IRAs is they can actually act as an emergency fund, or you could buy your first time home, you know, if you want to buy a home with it, I don't recommend it, but you have so much flexibility, a lot more than a lot of people actually know um, with the Roth IRA. And unfortunately for all of us here in the U.S., financial literacy is not really taught in, in, in our schools. And so, you know, when you hear the word Roth IRA, you probably have heard of it, but have no idea really what it is. I mean, in most cases, I'm speaking generally. So um, I hope that you're you're taking advantage of the tax advantage accounts that you have access to. Um, but if this is a, um, I'm just gonna assume that this is in a taxable account. All right, Jordan, let's take a look at your portfolio. So you're up 63%. So this is not including the reinvestment of dividends, right? So you got a good, healthy starting yield of just over 3%. You don't have an expense ratio, so you don't have any ETFs. You have 31 holdings. Let's see what you got in here. Uh, so you have it all into one single slice, okay? So you got Broadcom at the highest allocated target here. This is going to be an interesting play with, with 5G and what happens with Apple. I think this is going to be pretty interesting. I mean, you're 21 years old. There's a lot of room, a lot of time for this to compound and to grow. Yeah, I think this could be an interesting play. I personally don't own Broadcom in my portfolio um, at the moment, but this is, I think it's a strong dividend play. Uh, realty income, also really, really good. You know, when it comes to REITs, this is my favorite real estate REIT. It's a great monthly dividend payer. I, the more and more I invest into real estate, a real estate investment trust, the more I'm skewing towards quality and, um, you know, looking for safe havens like broad-based ETFs, like uh, from Vanguard or, or, or other, other such uh, ETFs. Visa, this is great. You're 21 years old. Visa is a great one. Southern Company, yeah, I mean, this is a pretty high, you know, Southern Company doesn't grow near as quickly as Visa, but they, I think they kind of balance themselves out. So I, I can see why you're doing that. Pepsi, you got WPC, another REIT in here. So you got about 11% in REITs. McDonald's, Caterpillar, 3M, Coca-Cola, Whirlpool. Okay, this is a cool one. So Whirlpool, they, if I'm not mistaken, they cut their dividend during the financial crisis. I think they've grown their dividend for like 10 years. Another, you know, couple that you could take a look at that I like similar to Whirlpool is AOS. And I also like Honeywell, some good ones comparable to uh, Whirlpool. Waste management, love waste management, store capital. So you got another real estate REIT. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe consider. So you got a lot of exposure to retail. Um, retail REITs, maybe take a look at DLR or AMT. These are more growth oriented REITs. You're not gonna get a high, as high of a starting yield. So see here, you're getting a 6%. With AMT, you're, you're not gonna get nearly half that, um, but you're gonna get the growth over time. So something to take a look at. I, I personally am not a fan. If you're gonna go with REITs, spread it out a little bit more in my opinion, or, or at least lower this to maybe 2% or, or 1%. Uh, just uh, just a thought. Procter & Gamble, love it. Kimberly Clark, love it. Johnson & Johnson. These three are in my co core holdings. These are great recession-proof stocks. DFS, this is a good one. Um, I like also American Express, but with American Express, with COVID, it's kind of a crazy time uh, to own, own financials. For me personally, what I've done, similar to the technology sector, what I've done is focus more on sector-specific ETFs in the financial and in the technology sector. Those two sectors are very difficult for me personally to predict or forecast what's going to happen in the future. So I've, I've taken more of a, a conservative approach to investing in financials and invest in uh, 
technology. Though with Microsoft, man, you really can't go wrong. Verizon, also a really good one. Dominion, I own Dominion in my portfolio. One that I think you would probably be better off with, in my opinion, is Next Era Energy, ticker NEE. Check out Next Era Energy. I think um, if you were going to make updates, I'm, I don't want to advocate for changing up your portfolio. I mean, the more you change it, the, the more diminishing returns you're going to have. But if you were to make updates, consider swapping out Dominion with Next Era Energy, in my opinion. Starbucks, good. Cisco, good. Qualcomm, good. Uh, Next Era Energy Partners, did they change their, did they change their, their ticker, NEP? One second. Let me see here. Yeah, no, it's NEE. What is NEP? Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm, the one that I'm talking about is with uh, NEE, Next Era Energy. All right, going down here. Oh, there we go. There's Honeywell. Cool. Home Depot, good. JP Morgan, Apple, good. Um, Altria Group, good. IBM, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not the biggest, biggest fan of IBM, similar to like Oracle. I think these are companies that, yeah, they they have a good dividend, but I, I don't know, man. Like IBM's been around forever. When I, I work in the technology space, I, I personally... I think uh, there's better, in my opinion, right? If you own IBM, those of you watching the video, I'm not here to hate on IBM. I just think that there's there's a lot of a lot of great um, growth opportunities out there uh, beyond IBM. Right now, it's it's hard to beat the what five plus yeah five plus dividend yield that it's yielding. And at t Great. Well, Jordan, so I, I really like your portfolio. I think you you know what you're doing, man. You, you said you had a YouTube channel. Um, you have good diversification within different sectors. One thing that I would highlight, take a look at your real estate slices. You got a little bit much in the retail uh, sector part of, of real estate investment trust. Maybe take a look at cell towers, uh, specialty REITs, or data center REITs, especially for your age, your age group. Um, another thing that you could consider is breaking up your, setting up your pie in sector specific slices. So if you do make adjustments over time, it's easier for you to update the uh, slices based off of the sector and not just the individual holding. Just a thought. But overall, really, really great job, Jordan. All right, the next portfolio is from Carlos. Carlos writes, hi man, hope all is well and you and your family are staying safe and healthy. Thank you, Carlos, I appreciate it. Uh, a bit of background info on me. My name is Carlos, I'm 20 years old from the UK. Um, I'm a minimum wage worker, so it's quite difficult to save big amounts. That's fine, I, I started, man, my first job, I worked at a donut shop making 5.15 an hour, so I, I hear you. Um, though thankfully I'm able to freely invest about 300 euros, around $370 per month uh, with, with your videos mainly, I feel in, uh, I fell in love, with, I can't read today, um, I fell in love with dividend growth investing, that's very cool. Starting so young, my focus is on investing in companies that have a high growth dividend for the very long term. I want to stop working ASAP, okay, and get a high constant cash flow to further invest and travel the world pretty much. I am open to more risk, reason why I have a mix of blue chip companies with other smaller companies that currently have a high dividend growth. In the UK, we don't have an equivalent to M1 Finance, uh, where you assign the percentage and it auto invests in a way. So I simply buy manually and track it all in a spreadsheet, which I would like to share with you today. I'm a bit of a new investor, just over two months now. You inspired me to create a channel and post my investment journey too. My name is Carlos Alvarez. Okay, cool. Where I use dividend growth investing from a UK investor's perspective. Awesome. Um, it's been loads of fun getting into investing and I want to thank you for your videos. They are extremely helpful. Keep them coming. Hey, thank you so much. All my holdings have an equal amount invested in them. However, moving forward, this is the percentage I would like to invest with them. Okay, so these are the target allocations that you're going to show here um, versus what you currently have. Okay, cool. Gradients from London. Well, hey, man, thanks. I've been to London a few times. I used to actually work in Munich in Germany, and I would travel to the UK quite frequently, actually. So um, I really, really enjoyed London. One random thought, um, one of my favorite things about London is the uh, – I, I absolutely love Indian food. Um, and they had really, really good Indian food in London. I still remember that it was like 
eight years ago. Well, cool. Let's take a look at your portfolio. All right, so you got broken up by sector allocation here on the far left, financials, consumer cyclicals, utilities and oil. Okay, it's pretty high. Um, real estate 10, technology 14 and a half, industrials, healthcare. Okay, so you got fair diversification. Um, the main thing here is you don't really want to go over 20% in an individual sector or, or industry. 25 is the absolute max. I wouldn't go over 25, just me personally, unless you're in your early 20s and that sector is technology. Um, for example, I wouldn't go in utilities and oil uh, over 20%, even 10% in my opinion. Dividend by company percentage, you got... Uh, 3M, you got Avi, Alpture Group, T-Mobile, Broadcom. Okay, the list goes on and on. You got Disney, you got Work. So Work is Slack, if I'm not mistaken. Very cool. Um, SPG, Purdue, Procter & Gamble. Okay, cool. Uh, dividends by sector. All right, monthly dividends. Good, good. All right, so I like that you're tracking this. This is the first observation that I have. If you don't track something, if you, if you have a goal and you're not tracking it, it's like when you go to the gym. Right? If you go to the gym and you're just randomly doing repetitions and you're not really tracking it, you're not going to get anywhere. If you want to get something, you want to get out of something, you really have to understand what is your goal and you have to stick to it. Okay. Uh, let's see what you got here. So you got it broken down by the target allocation. You got the dividend growth rate. That is great. Really, really good. I like it. You got Microsoft, Broadcom, Texas, Instruments, IBM, Cisco. Those are good in technology. Apple, you could even throw an Apple there. I like Apple personally. Um, consumer staples. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Procter & Gamble. Yeah, yeah, those are good. Um, Pepsi, is, yeah, that's fine. Consumer cyclical, Leggett & Platt, Starbucks, Home Depot, McDonald's. Yeah, definitely like McDonald's. Um, do you have the target allocation in there i think that's on the left there so 25 percent. so they're equal okay that's cool financials purdue jp morgan morgan stanley okay cool healthcare abvi pfizer johnson and johnson good i own all three of those real estate realty income spg yeah you got a little bit in re you got 50 percent retail man this is this is pretty high if you're in your 20s and you got iron mountain if, um, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I personally, you might be having a little bit unnecessary risk by skewing so much in retail. If, in my opinion, I think spreading it out to other sectors like specialty reads, data center reads, industrial reads, industrial reads are really, really good. They're going to be great for a long, long term. Take a look at some of those industrials, 3M, ITW, Cat, Lucky Martin, WRK. Oh, okay. I was thinking of work. I was thinking of the ticker symbol work is in Slack. Okay. WRK. Got it. Um, people were probably watching that thinking, Jake, what are you talking about? That's not work. Uh, that's not Slack. Um, okay, cool. Communications. You got AT&T, Comcast, Disney. Yeah. Yeah. Communications. I guess you could kind of consider it that it's more your consumer cyclical Disney. Okay, Verizon would also maybe be a good fit there. Utilities, Exxon Mobil, 7% in utilities. Okay, okay, Exxon Mobil, BEP. Yeah, yeah, I think those are fine. If you wanted to lower your risk, you could even break up B, uh, XOM, Exxon Mobil with Chevron. So instead of having 37% in Exxon Mobil, you could do half in Exxon Mobil and half in Chevron. Could spread out your risk. Let's see, what do you got here? So you have it all broken down. You have the shares, the average cost. So this is your tracking of, of the actual investment that you have in there. Okay, this is great, man. So I think this shows kind of the power of, of M1 Finance that you don't have to do this yourself, but it does it for you. What I would also take a look at is, take a look at propeller.com. It's from dividend.com, it's the uh, dividend tracker. It has a lot of this information in there. All right, well, Carlos, thank you so much again for sending over your portfolio. I'm really, really excited for you. I think you, you know what you're doing. You're really, really early in your stages. Focus on three things, cutting consumer debt, look where you can cut your expenses, and look where you can grow your income. But you're off to a really great start. All right, the next one here is from Dan. Dan writes, hi, I love your videos and investing strategy. I wanted to see if I could have uh, have you review my current portfolio. I do not use M1, so I'll be listing the holdings for you. I'm currently 35 and plan to use this portfolio for income in retirement, which I plan to uh, which I plan to be in 25 to 30 years. Okay, cool. Since my time horizon is still very long, I am not 
so concerned with current yield, but stocks that grow their dividend quicker so my yield on cost can be the best it can be at the time of my retirement. I love this. Great. Uh, I do... I do have some current yield stocks here just to give some current income to tap into an emergency, if an emergency. Okay. I have two levels of stocks, core, which I hold the greatest allocation in, auxiliary, which I def definitely want to own, but don't meet, but don't, but don't meet the level of importance in core holdings. Thank you so much for your time. Okay, great. So Dan, let's take a look at your core holdings. So you got VTI, VIG, MGK. Okay, these are three great dividend uh, ETFs or broad, low fee broad based ETFs. VTI is the total stock market, VIG is the dividend appreciation, and MGK, if I'm not mistaken, is the mega cap from Vanguard. So three great ETFs. Man, I, I just realized I am a damn nerd if I know that. <laughs> MGK, I don't invest in the MGK. I've just, I've looked at Vanguard ETFs so much. It's kind of weird, I, I've seen these tickers so many times. All right, so very cool. So VTI, absolutely a core position of mine. Um, I also like VOO, v, VOO is a really good one, the S&P 500, but let's take a look at it. So, um, and once again, they're all equal weighted. Microsoft, great. Procter & Gamble, Cisco. Yeah, Cisco could work. Uh, I think, okay, you got Disney in there. I, I was my I was kind of thinking, okay, you could maybe swap Cisco with Disney, but that, you got Disney in there as well. MasterCard, Visa, Intel, Waste Management. I love that you got Waste Management in there. Waste Management is such a great company, especially if you're looking to tap into this in 25 or 30 years. Waste Management's capital appreciation has beat, has just destroyed the S&P 500. It is such a growth stock. Avi, great. Disney, O, 3M, McDonald's, Starbucks, Johnson & Johnson, Next Air Energy, JP Morgan, Nike, Pepsi, uh, Home Depot, DLR, Costco, Waste Management. Okay, these are great. These are great. These are all high quality investments. You got VTI, you got VIG. Okay, let me, let me kind of, what you could also consider, you're 35 years old, another ETF that you can take a look at, there's two of them. I actually really, really like. I like VYM, the Vanguard High Dividend ETF, and I like the Schwab SCHD. These are really, really great ETFs. And I'll even give you a third one. Another one that I own in my portfolio that's a core position of my portfolio is DGRO, another great dividend appreciation ETF. This would be in line with VIG. But your core holdings, Dan, these are spot on. These are great. When I think of like what is you know potential risks, when I look at potential risks, I kind of, I think the only one that I'm not the so, so hyped about is maybe Cisco. Cisco, I think, is more in line with your IBM or your, your Oracle. They These are like your, your behemoth tech stocks, telecom stocks. I think uh, for your age, you could probably side more on the side of growth. But um, other than that, I mean, these are great. Uh, let's see, rough, so your next section, you got... Merck, you got Southern Energy, you got Leg and Imply, you got MDT, good pharmaceutical company, MO, Pfizer, KMB, Verizon, AWR, AWK. These are great. These are great high growth utilities, American Waterworks, ADP, Well Tower. All right. So, Dan, I think, man, I, I, I really, really like the way that you set up your, your holdings, and I'm a big fan of your core holdings. Great job, man. All right, the next portfolio here is from Maurice. First, I'd like to say that I really enjoy your channel and reviews. Hey, thank you so much, I appreciate it. I've learned a lot, my name is Maurice. If you get a chance, I would really appreciate you reviewing my portfolio. I'm 37 years old and plan on retiring around 53 years old. I have a 401k which has been taking a beating, you and me both, I contribute about 11000 a year, value about 67 k However, I opened a Robinhood account on March 18th. I'm, I'm a new investor. I started with a couple thousand dollars, but wasn't able to transfer over enough to catch the March lows. My main focus is dividend growth. I plan to invest about $400 a month from here on. I'm looking to hold for my lifetime. I'd like to know your opinion on my portfolio. The stocks in purple will be about 60% of my portfolio. PS airline and cruise stocks, I'm looking to sell for a profit. Okay, cool. So the purple are your core or your main stocks making up 60% of your portfolio. So let's see what you got in here. So you got Microsoft, you got IBM, you got Skyworks and Uber. Skyworks, I've been hearing a lot about Skyworks on CNBC a lot lately. Um, Microsoft is great. Um, 
Uber. This is more of a, a speculative um, investment, not so much a dividend growth stock. Um, but Microsoft, IBM, yeah. Skyworks, yeah. Visa, very, very good. Um, you said you're 37 years old. So 37, Visa is a good one, but you want to, you have to understand that it's going to take a lifetime for Visa to really, really accumulate enough in dividend income for you to live off. If, especially if you're only investing a, a small amount or small is, is relative to the person. But if you're, if you're not investing thousands and thousands of dollars into Visa, it's going to be difficult to reap the benefit of the dividend from Visa, at, at least in the next 15, 20 years, 20 plus years, in my opinion. Um, JP Morgan, JP Morgan is a really good one. Prudential is a good one. Wells Fargo, Wells Fargo just cut their dividend. I, I'm kind of disappointed in Wells Fargo. I mean, a lot of people have been making good arguments and bad arguments of why you should or you shouldn't hold Wells, Wells Fargo. I was just so disappointed by the 80% dividend cut. I, I just couldn't believe it. I mean, if they, if they were to cut it 40%, 50%, okay, but 80%, it's going to put you back 10 years to get, you know, even a 4% a, a dividend yield, which other financial companies are yielding right now. So I'm pretty disappointed in Wells Fargo. Royal Bank of Canada, Franklin Resources, and Citigroup. Okay. AT&T, Facebook, and China Mobile. All right. So 60% of your portfolio in four stocks is quite a bit. That's quite a lot. What I would what I would consider doing is also seeing where you could incorporate an ETF. If you're 37 years old and you're investing about $400 a month, I would see where you could invest in ETF. Some of my favorite ETFs that I would that I recommend that I own in my my own portfolio is VYM from Vanguard and SCHD. Those are two really really great high quality dividend growth ETFs that have a higher starting yield that you're going to see the uh, the return sooner than later. But yeah, Maurice, I think I think you you have some high quality companies in here. 60% is is a very concentrated approach with just four holdings. So that is my opinion. See where you can diversify a little bit more and even incorporate um, an ETF or two into your portfolio. Thank you so much for sending over your portfolio, Maurice. All right, the next portfolio here is from Tim. Tim writes, I thought I'd give you an interesting one to look at. All right, I'm, I'm excited. Background, I am 52 and this is my extreme risk dividend account. It accounts for about 1.5% of my total investments. Okay, so this is a very low, small portion of your investment. Okay, that's, that's good to hear. If it's extreme risk, I mean, 1.5% is not much. You could even go up a little bit more. Um, but let's, let's take a look at it. So total value is about 20K, down about 10K from cost. Okay, so this is really risky. I don't use M M1, so just, in, just a spreadsheet. The goal of this account is to create 10% plus dividends, 10%, and over 1K per month. Currently about five, $550 a month. I expect to have a small capital growth um, over the next 10 to 20 years. Uh, and I expect some of them to go to zero, but hopefully pay more in dividends than the cost. Wow. Okay. Um, so you're saying that some of them, you expect the, the share price to go to zero, but the dividend will pay for itself over time. Okay. Um, do, do, do. There, there are a few mistakes in the, in this list that I would not do again. And many lessons learned a few that are not paying dividends at the moment read, I would Never recommend this portfolio to, to anyone ever. Just thought you might enjoy sharing it. I don't add this to my portfolio in the IRA. Um, I don't add to this portfolio. It's in an IRA account. Dividends get invested into either new or existing, depending on what <laughs> on what I see that month. All right, Tim. Well, this sounds this sounds actually pretty fun. All right, so it's only one and a half percent of your portfolio. You're down 10k from your cost. Let's let's take a look at it. So you probably invested into you know maybe some energy stocks here, maybe some monthly dividend payers. A lot of monthly dividend payers have gone bust over the years, and uh, you know if you follow my channel, I've said many times I've I've made a lot, I've lost a lot. This is what I'm talking about when I've lost a lot. I invested into a, a couple of companies that went bust. I put, I invested into some monthly dividend payers that are no longer on the exchange. So. 
yeah, let's see what you got here. So you got Sun, CLM, CenturyLink, and then a lot of these tickers I'm not familiar with. So uh, I'm assuming that some of them are, are monthly payers. PSEC, yeah, I'm not. I, a lot of people talk about this on, on, uh, on YouTube. I'm not a big fan of it. Hey, this one's good. This one's really good. Altria Group. S REIT. Isn't this a isn't this a REIT, not a financial? Um, let's see here. RDS. Okay. Yeah, a lot of these I'm not I'm not familiar with. Like you probably got some MLPs in here. You got some energies in here. Uh, CenturyLink. This is a good example. So with the, it's a telecom with. It's kind of like uh, your AT and T or your Verizon, I guess you could say. Uh, Central and they they've cut their dividend here recently. Like I think right now they have a 10% dividend yield. So I I don't know, man. Like <laughs> I think it's it's definitely fun to kind of review this. I'm glad that this only makes one and a half percent of your portfolio. Let me let me think about this. So if you were if you wanted to play around, like I think there's a fair balance. What why do you have to risk your capital, so the share price going to zero for a 10% dividend yield? why not consider just Sticking with a five percent or a six percent or a seven percent, and get a stock that doesn't go to zero. Let me let's play around with this for a second. Let's jump into let's jump into M1 Finance and let's create a pie. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Like there's ways that you can get a high dividend without really uh, having to risk your portfolio going to zero. Let's create a pie. Uh, let's take a look at okay. Let's you have uh, Altria Group in there, so it's got almost an eight percent dividend yield. Let's add that in there. Let's add another one. Oops. Let's add Philip Morris in there. Let's add T-Mobile in there. Let's add, I don't know, let's add Chevron in there. Chevron's got pretty big dividend. Let's add ExxonMobil. Let's add Verizon. Verizon's got over a 4% dividend. And let's add a few ETFs, HDV. Got a 4% dividend yield. Let's add IBM just for fun. It has a high dividend yield. And let's add SCHD, All right? It's only got a 3.5%, but this, this ETF is not going to go to zero, at least anytime soon. Let's see what you could get here. So here, just off the bat, yeah, you're, you're down over the last five years, which you don't want, but you're not at zero. None of these stocks have gone to zero, and you're almost getting a 6% dividend yield. Right, and if the six percent wasn't good enough, what you could do is you could say, "All right, well, I want to bump that up. I want to bump that up, and you want to bump that up." I'm just doing this on the fly. Uh, I don't know. Let's say that's five, and let's say that that is six. This is an example. Let's see what happens there. So we're changing up the allocation. Okay, you're now at a 6%, right? So these are a few things that you could do. I mean, you don't have to go and invest into you know, a company that is on the brink of bankruptcy to still get a, get a healthy dividend. Now, but Tim, I think this is really cool. I'm glad that it's only one and a half percent of your total investment. This is definitely something fun. It can be, you know, if you follow Jim Cramer, this could be your mad money and uh, something kind of like an experiment. But thank you so much for sending this over, Tim. All right, let's take a look at the last portfolio here from Alexander. Hi, Jake, my name is Alexander and I am 13 years old from Britain, very into dividend investing just this January. I got my dad to set up an account in his name with $720. I can deposit $10 a month, not much. Hey, for 13 year old, 13 years old, Hey, you're, you're doing great constantly as I don't have a job. I know the stocks are, are not weighted very well. My goal for this account is for when I'm 18 to get at least $10 a month in dividends. Okay, so you want $10 a month in dividends by the time you're 18. So that gives you five years. All right, let's take a look at your, your portfolio here, Alexander. So it looks like you have a few holdings. You got AT&T, you got Coca-Cola, uh, Johnson & Johnson on here. GSK, I believe, is a pharmaceutical company. Also, uh, I believe they're in the UK, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so you got some good, high-quality companies in here. The fact that your dad is helping you start this early, your your dad is, he's, he's really, really, wow. You, you're at a huge advantage that everybody else doesn't have, simply because you have so much time on your side. So when you're looking to invest this young, biggest advantage that you have is time. 
the power of compounding can start so much quicker with you. What you don't want to do is overcomplicate your portfolio. Keep it as simple as possible. Okay. The, the best thing is, is if you never sold anything, the, the, that snowball effect is going to have such a, a bigger impact in your life than somebody, for example, if they started in their 30s or 40s. So if you can find an investment or investments that you can hold on to forever and never sell, you're going to be at a much better position, right? So think of companies that you could hold on to forever. For example, Coca-Cola is a great one. Johnson & Johnson is a great company. Um, one that you could also add in there maybe is, is Disney. Disney is a really great dividend growth company, especially if you're your age. Another one would maybe be Visa. You, maybe you've heard of Visa, maybe you haven't. And another one would be an ETF, a low-fee ETF. But Alexander, I am so, so jealous. I am so happy that you're, you're in the position to start investing so young. Your dad is a smart, smart guy. Um, thank you so, so much for sharing this. And uh, wow, I, I am, I'm truly, truly impressed. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you so much. If you're, if you're new to the channel, I'd invite you to subscribe. If you like today's video, give me a thumbs up and I will catch everybody in the next video.